Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, this is Andy from Big Mets Workshop and Studios. So today I'm painting a commission for a Cestus Assault Ramp. Now this was an absolute swine to paint, um, as there's very little detail on it, but it's a very cool looking kit. I'll uh, give them that. Now as you know it's a forge world kit, and this is for a Crimson Fist chapter, although um, you'll not actually see any Crimson Fist decals on it this time. So, in my infinite wisdom I've forgotten to uh, record the blue, so I'm going straight off into the engines, which I've used Gunmetal Salt, which is a Vallejo paint. Now, um, I use this on basically all the metal work on the entirety of the vehicle. It uh, just gives you a nice even um, colour through the entirety of all the engines and uh, also all the undercarriage. Um, and here I'm painting the side on the reds. Now, I use a Vallejo red primer on this. Uh, it gives you a nice even coat as I, I often do. Now this was done purely by hand um, using a, a primer mixed with a bit of water just to thin it out a bit and uh, get a nice even coat. A couple of thin coats if needed. Uh, I managed to do this, um, it goes on with so well I managed to do it in just a one because um, it just gave me a base colour to work with. Once I'd done that I moved on to the Golds, uh, which I used another Vallejo colour, Brassy Brass, um, just on a trim work. It's a nice, again, you'll, uh, you've seen it in my uh, old, other videos, I use this quite extensively. It's a really good little colour. Uh, I tend to use it for all my brass work now. And I did it across all the um, Aquilas and things, which shortly afterwards gave a Agrox wash. Let's face it, Agrox Earthshade is a, a bit of a winner. You can't go wrong with this stuff. So the um, base colour on the, on, on the uh, blue is Cantor Blue hit with an airbrush. Uh, the first edge highlight shade is McCrag Blue, um, which I just did on all the edges, uh, back and forward. It just uh, gives you a nice um, blended, gives you a nice colour uh, to work with over the Cantor. And on the second edge highlight, it is a, I believe it's a mix of a, a Cantor and white, um, which I then just put towards the forward edges of the, of the um, plates uh, to give it a nice bright shine. So on the red, my uh, first coat of actual colour is Vallejo Gory Red. Again, thinned out um, and put over the entirety of the thing. Because I use the Vallejo Primer, it goes over really nicely. Uh, sometimes this can come out shiny when it's dry, but don't worry too much as um, if you put a matte varnish over the top, it'll uh, even that out. I then highlighted it up with Bloody Red, uh, which I put towards the rear edges and made sure I was using it very very thinly uh, so I could spread the uh, paint out without it looking too thick. After that I used uh, a much brighter uh, red, now, I forget what colour it is probably something along the lines of uh, Evil Suns. Again, I just uh, put a very, very um, wet layer on this as uh, I use um, water to blend the paint uh, further down so you, you get a sort of a blended effect. It's not a proper wet blend, but it's something very similar to it. And it just uh, thins the paint out and just lets it stretch uh, the colour so you get a nicer uh, blended finish rather than just a blocky sort of uh, colour. So, uh, as, as you've seen, there's the Aquila. Now, if we had the facilities, uh, we'd have been able to use a better quality uh, stencil, but we made this made do with this one, um, straight out of the printer, uh, just off Google Images. 
Um, that allowed us to put a little bit of in interesting detail on the front of the vehicle as, as you've seen uh, yourself it's, it's quite flat, there's very little feature to it. We wanted it to look a bit more interesting. So again with the um, base colour was Vallejo Primer Red um, going nice and steady. Now the wings on the sensor was pinned down with a little bit of uh, Tamiya uh, Mascot uh, just, to, just allowing me to um, get a bit more accuracy. Uh, because of the nature of the paper stencil though we did have to um, clean it up afterwards. The next coat was Vallejo uh, Red and this was gone straight over the top after it had dried. Uh, there were several actual uh, layers on this um, including the yellow so just to bring the highlights of the, um, of the wings up but a little bit higher. Uh, you could go to town with whatever you want now. It's just to make it stand out, give you a bit of an interesting feature on the uh, vessel. Once I've removed it, tied it up with the Cantor Blue and again the Leo Red, uh, the Gory Red, uh, to give it a bit of an edge highlight and also just to tidy up those defined edges, make it look a bit neater as um, stencil work can be quite scruffy um, if you don't get it tied down fa um, fast enough. But I didn't make the mistake last time of using generic masking tape, I did actually use the um, a specific model modeler's masking tape which is Tamiya yep Dodgers confirmed it is Tamiya um, so I didn't have to do as much tidying up as I could have done and there was no paint um, stripped off the vehicle so I flipped the vehicle over now and I'm starting off with my old favorite just to get it um, scorched good old burnt umber now, as you, uh, anyone who's watched my videos before will know, I use burnt umber for everything I possibly can. Um, for, it's particularly good for this, though, as it gives you a nice deep brown, um, nice deep brown colour to work with. Makes it look real rich, um, and I just give it, got it all over the underneath of the vehicle, on the wings. Uh, a bit more emphasis on the front of the vehicle as well, as that'll be um, where it'll be coming through the atmosphere. Next colour on top of that is again another one of my favourites, uh, Dark Earth, uh, the Layer Wear Dark Earth. Both of these colours are thinned down even though they are airbrush paints. I've thinned down um, pretty much everything now, even though it's an airbrush paint I'll still put it for a, a, a bit of thinner into it. Um, the Dark Earth that goes across all the burnt umber areas and the further wide as well just to yeah I go over the entire area with the um, dark earth it blends out the burnt on but tones down the richness and the brownness of it it also allows you to make the make the scorching look a little bit uh, more even and here is where the wing came off which um, I was a little bit frustrated at, but it did give me a good opportunity for a nice camera angle for you. Now we're going on to a bit of black, just to get into the deeper sections, uh, where the most scorching would be. Um, front of the wings, front part of the fuselage, maybe on the engines as well. And uh, I'll continue that across every, every area where it would make sense to be and that way on you can just play about and get it to the colours you need just build up those layers nice and gentle no rush um, you don't want to make it look like an ISO it's very easy to uh, get it to peel the old, um, your older paint off so make sure it's dry thoroughly before you do another layer anyway thanks for, thanks for uh, listening to me uh, waffle on again I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. I will be doing a, uh, an actual waffling video next week. Uh, we've got some more in bases and things uh, getting released soon as well. So uh, hopefully some of you guys will be going down to the uh, 
40k tournament at Lenton this weekend. And if you are, let yourself make yourself known to me. I'll be playing my Night Lords. Uh, see you there, guys. If you're going, have a good weekend, and I'll see you next week.